Alrighty folks, thanks for clicking on this video. James Cards FC here. If you're new to the channel, we focus on the financial side of the soccer card market. And today I was going to be talking about the select few, a possible number of new rookies to target based on the fact that they were included in recent Panini Select sets. And that gives them the opportunity to maybe have very few rookie cards in their rookie season, as opposed to players that are in every single set that we see every year. So uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into it with the introduction as always. So, as discussed many times on this channel, one of the most important factors for rookie card values in the ultra modern market is how many checklists the rookie appears in. This uh, is because of simple supply and demand. If a rookie is in more sets, they have more cards. If they have more cards, um, those cards are going to be cheaper because there's so much supply that demand cannot overtake the supply. Whereas if they have very few cards uh, and demand increases by a lot, then those prices of those rare cards can go up. So uh, every year there are a few decent rookies who fall out of the mainstream tops and Panini checklists due to the teams they play for or late season breakthrough performances. So players from clubs outside of the UEFA competitions are absent from the top's UCC product line, meaning they'll be absent from the mainstream flagship sets of the season. Players from nations outside of major tournaments are also absent from FIFA-related sets, so if the player plays for a nation that doesn't really get in a lot of products and doesn't have a lot of hype for it, they could slip out of some nations um, type checklists. And then thirdly, if a player surged late in the season, it's possible they were left out of the original checklist for the set, meaning that either their card is then short printed or they just don't exist in the set at all because when they were manufacturing the product, that player really wasn't thought of as being somebody to produce a card for. So. So far in the 2022-2023 season, uh, we have seen a Panini select release for three of the top five leagues specifically. There is a Premier League specific set, a La Liga set, and a Serie A set. And then very soon we're going to be getting a FIFA related set for national teams. So keep an eye on that checklist as well when it comes out. But the point is that many of the clubs in these leagues are not re represented in the UCC, so there's a possibility that the rookie cards in these sets might be some of the only rookie cards for the players that are in them. And with this in mind, we're going to go ahead and dig into today some of the potential options for rookies that might only appear in Select and potentially Mosaic if that releases in the future. But it's not on the release calendar right now, so it's not confirmed that that will be coming out. So it's very possible that the players I walk through today will have very, very few rookie cards, especially in comparison to those players that are in the top UCC and flagship checklists. So... Without further ado, we'll start with the rookies everyone probably already knows about. That'll start with Kavitsha. He's potentially the most popular rookie of the 2022-2023 class, despite not being in the flagship checklist. He is not going to be in Topps UCC, and I believe this is because Napoli does not have, or sorry, Topps does not have the rights to use Napoli in their sets, so potentially he could fall out of every single top set this year, and that would be actually a great thing for him because then he has less cards, and the cards that are out there of him are going to be more valuable because of, like I said before, simple supply and demand. Uh, for Kavitsha, personally, he's a world-class player, uh, at least for this past season he was world-class, and the question really is what's next for him, how much of his world-class nature is going to be priced into his cards that come out. Nobody really knows. It's kind of be, going to be risky just because of how expensive he's going to be, but if he does turn out to be a super, super key player for this generation, the fact that he has so few rookie cards could be really great for his market. Um, he's a 2020, or sorry, he's a 22-year-old Georgia winger playing for Napoli, and he had 25 goal involvements in 34 Serie A matches this past season, so really amazing statistics. And his purple out of 49 select rookie just recently sold for around $310, and I believe his gold select out of 10 is currently in auction in China or Japan. Uh, one of those markets has it, and it's over a thousand dollars right now so it's gonna be a very very expensive card he's gonna have very expensive rookie cards but perhaps the price will eventually be warranted for him because they could be extremely rare uh, then we're going to go ahead and talk about Evan Ferguson, but before I get into him, I just wanted to mention that some of the guys that I'm going to be talking about are also in a score-specific product, like Panini Score has different sets for the different leagues, but Panini Score is a paper release, it's paper product, paper cards instead of chromium cards, and the market has such a heavy preference for chromium cards that I don't even really count the score rookies in most cases. So, so talking back to Evan Ferguson, he's a teenager with Premier League starts and goals already under his belt. The question for him is, is he going to feature enough, especially for Brighton, considering they're going to be playing uh, in European tournaments this 
this upcoming season, and they have a lot of attacking options, and it's possible they'll bring in even more. They already signed Joao Pedro, and they have a, a few other promising attacking options as well. So it could be tough for him to get minutes, but he is an 18-year-old from Ireland, center forward for Brighton, six goals in 19 Premier League matches this season, and then more, impref- more impressively, three goals in four a- FA Cup matches. His orange out of 75 select rookie just recently sold for around $85. So he's already pretty expensive, but he's going to be nowhere near as expensive as Kavitsha. And that's obviously because of just how much better Kavitsha is seen as a pros- prospect right now. Uh, then we'll move into a couple of promising center forwards. These are guys you probably maybe have heard of. Definitely not to the level of the previous guys, but they've been talked about um, very recently in terms of being potential next stars at the center forward position. So uh, we'll start with Rasmus Hodgland. He's a young goal scorer that is heavily involved in transfer rumors right now after having a breakout season with Atalanta. He's a 20-year-old Denmark center forward, and he had 16 goals and 7 assists in 42 total matches this season. His gold out of 10 select rookie just recently sold for right around $1,000 in China, and he does come from that Serie A select set, which is the shortest printed of any of these um, select sets. So even his um, normal refractors and base cards are pretty expensive. I think his silvers are in the $25 to $50 range. So that's a lot for an unnumbered card, but perhaps given that it could be really short print, that might be an attractive option if you're interested in Hodgland. Uh, Then you have Nicholas Jackson. He was a late-season bloomer who went on a scoring spree to end the La Liga season. Uh, He's a 21-year-old from Senegal, and he's the center forward for Villarreal. He had 12 goals and 4 assists in 26 total La Liga matches, but I think 10 of those goals came in the past couple months, so he really turned it on at the end of the season. He is significantly cheaper than Rasmus Hodgland and the other two guys that we talked about. His gold out of 10 select rookie sold for $175. Now, I believe... That was before he scored a brace in one of the last couple weeks of the season. So he may be a bit more expensive now, but still nowhere near uh, the other guys that I've talked about previously. That's probably because he plays um, in La Liga and there's not really a lot of people paying attention to La Liga. He plays for Villarreal, a team that's not really relevant in the hobby. So he's a bit more under the radar and he's 21 years old and plays for a lesser country. So a lot of factors not going in his favor, but he is a very, very talented promising center forward and if he does end up panning out and getting big transfer moves then his rare cards could be uh, some good things to look at. Uh, Then we'll move into La Liga lottery tickets. I have a part one and a part two to this and we'll go ahead and cover some of the guys that might be worth taking a look at in the La Liga select set. I looked at the Serie A checklist and I didn't think there was anybody left to talk about after Hajlin and Kavitsha, but you can take a look at that checklist as well. I just didn't think there was anybody worth mentioning, but I do have four La Liga players that I think are worth talking about. Uh, First, we have Lazaro Vinicius. He is a late, late season bloomer. He had a hat trick in the final La Liga month. He's a 21-year-old Brazil winger for UD Almeria. Almeria, I think is actually how you correct correctly pronounced that. He had six goals in 19 matches, but five of those goals came in the final six matches, so really late season turn on for uh, Lazaro. His field level purple out of 75 select rookie recently sold for around $60, so he's around the same price as a guy like Nicholas Jackson and nowhere near the price of the first three guys that I mentioned in this video. Uh, Then you have Luis Enrique. He's another Brazilian winger. He had 100 matches in the Brazilian league before he transferred over to La Liga, uh, and he had 10 goal involvements in 43 matches for Real Betis this season. His tie-dye out of 35 select rookie cost around $20 recently, so he's an even lesser prospect in terms of price than Lazaro Vinicius, but one I thought you could take a look at considering he already has so many games under his belt and he did have a few goal involvements and he's Brazilian and he plays in La Liga, so there's some favorable things going on for him potentially. Then you have the La Liga lottery pickets. La Liga Lottery Tickets Part 2, including one of my personal favorites, El Bilal Toure. He's a James F. James Cards FC shout-out. I talked about him in at least one video previously. He had a hot start to the season, then he got injured, and then he scored a goal in the final match of the season coming back for injury. So there's a lot of positives going on in terms of his transfer rumors right now. Mostly it's lower-tier Premier League clubs that are looking at him, like Everton, and I think Wolves might be another team that was brought up in discussion for him. So he's not going to go to a super high 
type team, but perhaps he could show up in the Premier League and that might be able to boost his market a little bit. Definitely would boost it more than playing for um, Almeria right now in La Liga. He's a 21-year-old Mali center forward, so not the best nationality in terms of the hobby, uh, but he did sco- score seven goals in 21 matches this season. His number of matches was shortened, of course, due to his injury, but he seems to be fully back now. And his black one-of-one select rookie sold for around $210 recently. I really thought about going for it, but at the end of the day, I did not. We will see if I end up kicking myself for that because he's a guy that I have been looking at, haven't bought anything yet, and I would have liked the black one-of-one select rookie, but just decided I didn't want to take such a deep plunge on him. I might get in on some cheaper lower-end stuff of his, but we'll see if I end up regretting that one-of-one. And then finally, I wanted to talk about Alex. Uh, I don't really know how to pronounce the last name, Baina, I will, I will guess that. Um, I do know his statistics and where he plays. He is a solid U21 midfielder who is probably most known for getting punched by Federico Valverde in a match. Um, he's 21 years old, Spain attacking midfielder for Villarreal, and he had 18 goal involvements in 48 matches this past season. So he had the most goal involvements of any of the lottery ticket type guys, but he's also the oldest of these players. Uh, his gold out of 10 select rookie recently sold for around $63. So of all the players I talked about today, he is the cheapest, but that's probably because he plays attacking midfield. He's older, but he does have some intriguing stats and perhaps he gets some moves in the future that could help his market just felt like talking about him briefly because he did have so many goal involvements at such a young age Alrighty, and with that, we'll go ahead and move to the conclusion. Um, If these players are not included in other sets for the 2022-2023 release window, their rookie cards could see volatile price swings if they perform well to open this coming season of 2023-2024, or if they do end up receiving transfers to popular clubs, that of course could boost their market as well, like we saw with Darwin Nunez in this past year. His market really exploded when he transferred from Benfica to Liverpool, and he was only in the Obsidian set, so those cards went nuts because because the whole supply and demand equation got thrown out of whack by him transferring to one of the biggest clubs in our market. So um, it's possible that these players appear in more checklists throughout the year. So keep an eye on new releases to see if their names do end up popping up. But the fact that they play for clubs outside of the UCC is a very good sign. So keep an eye on upcoming checklists. If they continue to slip through the cracks on those checklists, uh, I think it's all the more intriguing to go ahead and look at these guys as potential options as guys with rare rookies that could end up popping off and transferring to big clubs or having a big season next year. Um, There will be more players like this that slip through the cracks of checklists, so be on the lookout for players like this that only appear in one or two checklists throughout the season that might have the potential to either put together a good couple of seasons in their current club or transfer to an even bigger club where the hype machine can start working in their favor. Uh, The last point here, it's rare to have an ultra-modern era player with few rookie cards, but past examples have shown there can be great potential ROI if the players with limited rookie options exceed their expectations. So examples would be Darwin Nunez. His prices exploded because he was only in the Obsidian card set uh, for his rookie season, and then he transferred to Liverpool, and a lot of attention went to his market, and a lot of uh, his cards from the Obsidian set went up tremendously in value. Then you have Victor Osman, who, while he didn't transfer, he had one of the best seasons in all of the top five leagues this year, and his cards really exploded in value, and he's only in three or four rookie sets as opposed to the 20-plus that most rookies are in. And then you have a guy like uh, Gonzalo Ramos, who is only in the 2020 Merlin set for rookie cards. And after his four goal performance at the World Cup, those really exploded in value. He also had a really good season with Benfica this past season. So his prices have been up ever since that um, four goal game. And even his performances with Benfica have put some excitement on his market. And the fact that he only has one rookie card set really helps keep those values up. So With all that out of the way, I thank you guys so much for tuning in to this video. Feel free to like, leave a comment down below if there's a guy that you're looking at that may have slipped through the cracks on some checklists that might be interesting. Um, And feel free to join the Discord link in the description as well. It is free, and you can talk soccer cards with content creators like myself and a few others um, and get some more news that way. So, like I said, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.